The following program contains mature content matter. Listener discretion is advised. Since the dawn of time, the world has been plagued by demons and monsters, cloaked by the night and shadows. However, humanity found out about these creatures and sent out brave men and women to defend their homelands. These are the tales of the Monster Hunters. At Pearson International Airport, after arriving from London, England, Trip Connors and Olivia walk through the terminal, towards the exit. Trip in desperate need of nicotine. God, give it a rest, Olivia. She's going to be happy to see me. Happy? <laughs> People who disappear don't usually like to be found. Stop overthinking it, Olivia. I know her. It'll be alright. Yes, you knew her. Seven years ago. Many people, not you of course, but people change over the years. I think we both know I needed to get away after everything that happened back at home. Everything that happened? You left your fiancé at the altar in front of a church full of family and friends. How do you figure that you're the one who needs to get away? Hey, I love Fiona. You sure have a funny way of showing it. When I thought about marriage, it really began to scare me. Me, Olivia, can you believe it? I've been on how many hunts? And I've never gotten scared. But suddenly I realised I was only going to have sex with one woman for the rest of my life. And it scared the hell out of me. Ugh, please, don't give her that reason for standing her. They both walk out of the terminal. Trip immediately strikes up a cigarette. God, Olivia turns away from Trip, stepping down from the curb and flying down the oncoming orange taxi. Olivia steps back onto the curb and then turns to Trip. I still think that this is a bad idea. No, you flying over 3,000 miles to meet a man you've met online is a bad idea. Olivia frowns as a taxi pulls up and stops. Trust me, she'll be happy to see. The next day, Chloe has just returned back to her store after picking up her lunch. Any calls while I was gone, Brooke? There were no calls, Chloe. But there is a man waiting to see you inside your office. And you just assumed it would be okay to let him wait there for me? I'm sorry. He said he knew you. (sighs) That's okay, Brooke. Just keep an eye out here, please. Annoyed, Chloe slides her hand behind her, down the back of her jeans slightly, as she feels for the gun that she has there. She begins to walk toward her office at the back of the shop. As she draws near, she sees the door to be open. She stops when she reaches the door and looks inside to see a man standing in front of her desk with his back to her. Who the hell are you? And what do you want? When the man turns around, revealing Trip Connors. Oh my god, Chloe. It's been a hot minute, cousin. Come in, we have so much to catch up on. Canary P.I.? <laughs> What's that, a pet store? The Canary P.I. audio drama podcast tales of the peculiar through the eyes of your favorite gumshoe. Well, maybe one of them. Listen to our newest two-hour saga titled Reminisce to Remember and our remastered season one show is being released now. Aliens have your husband's head in a jar and the toaster stealing from you. Tell it to Rod Serling, maybe I'll buy you a ham sandwich for the rights. Canary P.I. Available in most places podcasts are found. Chloe steps into the office, and then stops just inside the doorway. (laughs) I'm sorry, cousin. Are we sticking with Chloe, or can I just call you Margot? Chloe stood there a moment, still seeing but not believing who was standing in her office. 
Are you just going to stand there and stare at me? Or are you going to give your cousin a big old hug? Well, where is Olivia? I know you wouldn't fly here by yourself. She's off meeting the love of her life, so she thinks. Honestly, I told her she was making a big mistake coming all this way to meet someone she's only spoken to over the computer. Ah, but what do I know? I guess I'm an old romantic and like to meet women the old-fashioned way. What are you doing here? Well, that's a silly question now, isn't it? I'm here to see you, Margo. Oh no, I don't go by that name no more. Ah, but that's the name of your true self. You've only just forgotten. Really? You are going to quote Return of the Jedi to me? <laughs> if I'm not mistaken, it was always your favorite film, which always baffled me because everyone knows Empire was the greatest film in the entire saga. Ah, uh, I will ask for a second time trip why are you here? And I will give you the same answer I gave you the first time, Darth. I'm here to see you. It's been seven years, Trip. Why now? Why are you here? <laughs> well, you haven't been exactly easy to find them now, have you? Yet, here you are. Yes, I am. How did you find me? Dumb luck, really. Dumb luck? You haven't forgotten that I'm as big or bigger a comic book nerd than you, have you? What has that got to do with anything? A lot, Margot. Do you remember that comic book shop in Manchester we used to go to together? Yeah, uh, what about it? If I remember correctly, I was waiting there in line to pay for some anthologies. And, well, that day just happened to be comic book day. And, lo and behold, on the TV screen they were showcasing shop owners who were taking part in comic book day. Well, I was very surprised when they got to Tuxedo City, and to your shop, and whose pretty face should appear on the telly? Sure, at first I was not sure it was you because of whatever plastic surgery you'd done to alter your appearance. So, I went to see a friend of mine, and he was able to use the photo they used on TV and run a match on it. The results came back 97% match, Margot. Chloe frowned, and then walked by Trip around her desk and sat down behind it. So, what are you going to do now that you've found me, Trip? Margot, I'm not here to end your life. But your mum deserves to know that her only child is alive and well, doesn't she? My mother knows I'm alive, Trip. She does? Do you really think I would disappear and not let her know about it? So all these years she did know. She only pretended not to know where you were. I talk with her as often as I can, Trip. And she had no problem with you wanting to disappear. She didn't like the idea, but she understood why I had to leave. Why did you leave? I don't want to get into that right now. Fair enough. I'm not planning on leaving anytime soon. So when you're ready to spill, I'm all ears. So should I assume while you're in town, you plan on hunting? If the... But Tripp's attention is immediately grabbed when he locks eyes on the picture frame on Chloe's desk. Picks it up. In the photo is Bruno and Pat, standing between Joe, in front of the pizzeria. Bloody hell, is that Joe Domenico? <sighs> yes. And his grandsons. I can't believe you know him. I take it you've heard of him. Are you serious? Any hunter worth their salt knows who he is. His hunts are legendary. Do you know why they call him Wolf Killer? Is that because he has killed a lot of werewolves? So you do know them? Obviously. Are those blokes in the photo with him hunters as well? Bruno and Pat, yes. You wouldn't remember this because you were too young, but Joe found himself in your neck of the woods once and he ended hunting with your dad. Stop right there, Trip. I do not want to discuss my father or his hunts. Oh, uh, sorry, Marco. <laughs> And another thing, since you're planning to stick around, you need to address me like everyone else does, as Chloe. Are we clear? Loud and clear, Chloe. But in exchange, you have to let me meet Joe. Oh, fine. But you have to tell him your last name is Curtis. What? Why? Uh, gee, I don't know, Trip. I introduce you as my cousin, and you tell him your last name is... Connors, Joe will make the connection to my father. 
fine. All right, good. But in the meantime, you can tell me the whole story of why you left your fiancé at the altar. Your mother told you, didn't she? Oh, she did. Trip groans and runs his fingers through his thick hair. <sighs> Split half of that with me and I'll tell you everything. <sighs> All right. Let me get a plate. Tales of the Monster Hunter Serial Box Issue The Visitor was voiced by Roberta Jackson as Chloe. Hal Harris as Trip. Mads Franklin as Olivia. And Val Cha as Brooke. Royalty free music by Tube Backer and Alexander Nakarada. End credits theme by Alexander Ferrara. Audio engineering by Alexander Ferrara. Created by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Directed and produced by Antonio and Enzo Ferrara. Cover art by Enzo Ferrara. Edited and written by Antonio Ferrara. Creative consultant Paul Cairns. This presentation of Tales of the Monster Hunter Serial Box Issue has been brought to you by Giant Monster Productions. Copyright 2023. To contact Giant Monster Productions, email them at giantmonsterprod at hotmail.com. Follow us on Twitter at Giant Monster Pro, Instagram at Tales of the Monster Hunters, and on Facebook and YouTube. If you have enjoyed this podcast and want to hear more, please subscribe, like, and favorite so you never miss an issue. Thank you for listening.